Praise the Lord. Amen. We're glad to be in the house of God this evening. Uh, we want to go to the Lord in prayer, but before we do, I uh, want to welcome each one to being a part of our services this evening, our live feed Bible study uh, this evening on a Wednesday afternoon. God has been good to us, been some beautiful days, uh, just beautiful weather, but uh, even with the health crisis, still being able to get outside and do a few things in the yard is a great thing to do. Being cooped up is not so fun, but I'm sure some have been out fishing and different things like that. But continue your social distancing, continue in washing your hands, uh, and let's continue to pray and worship God. Amen. Uh, those that are joining us on uh, Facebook Live, take a moment to click like, comment, share the post, uh, continue to share each post or that we can continue to reach more and more people as we're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Continue to remember that our Sunday school lessons on Sunday mornings and our sermon outlines will be on our website. Uh, that way you'll be able to follow along with those. Uh, and on our Version app, you should be able, under events, be able to search for Coosa Valley Church of God and be able to be a, uh, follow along with the outline there. Our live avenues, all of our ways of being able to uh, broadcast our services on Facebook Live, YouTube, our website, our mobile app, your smart TV apps such as Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. You'll be fi you cannot find all of that information on our website as well as uh, information to be able to send your prayer request in. We want to continue to be praying with you, especially in a time such as this. We've had several connected with our church. Greatly appreciate them calling and touching base with all of our church family, uh, checking on each one, praying with them over the phone. Uh, just seeing if there's anything that we can do. So I uh, do appreciate each one of those doing that. Uh, continue to, if, you, if someone calls, give them. If you have a prayer request, be sure to let them know. They'll be sure to get that back to us. And uh, we want to continue to be praying with you, especially now more than ever before. If you have a prayer request, you're welcome to text that in to 205-642-8744. You can also call that number. Uh, if you don't get someone, leave a voicemail. We'll be uh, continuing to be praying for you during this time. Also, our giving. I want to thank each one uh, that is continuing to give. We've had many that have come to the church, to the parsonage, and brought your contributions. Online giving uh, has increased. I want to thank each one being a part of that as well. Uh, you can mail your contributions to the church. You can do bank uh, bill pay. Our online giving, PayPal, text to give. All of this and so much more can be found on our website at cvcog.church. Uh, and you'll notice on the bottom of your screen, we're going to continue to be looping all of those web, web addresses to where that you can find all of this information and more on our website. We want to go to the Lord in prayer and just pray for uh, not only our church family, but our state and our nation, our leaders. Uh, as they're doing their best and their part to keep us safe during this health crisis. We've got to do our part. We've got to do uh, what we need to do to continue to do the social distancing, washing our hands, things like that. But we can also do our part in praying for those that are making decisions on our behalf during this crisis. So let's bow our heads and let's pray and ask God to move and minister in our services this evening. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Fathers, we come to you today. want to thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed us to come to worship, praise, and magnify you. What an honor and a privilege it is. Father, you've heard the request that's been given over this last week. You see each one, each need. Father, I pray right now that you'll move in a mighty way in their lives. Open the windows of heaven and pour out an anointing and a blessing that could only come from you today. Father, I pray that you'll touch and minister to the prayer request that's been given in over the phone, over text message. Father God, I pray that you'll just minister in a mighty way. Touch our church family as they're joining with us this evening, whether they be in their living room, their kitchen, going down the road, sitting on their front or back porch. Father, I pray that you'll bring encouragement in their lives today. Touch our praise team and each one that's coming to be a part of the production of this service. Father, I pray that this is not a production, this is not entertainment, but they are coming in to help with this broadcast to be able to get this into our church family's homes. Father, I pray that you'll continue to bless them and 
minister to them, continue to keep a hedge of protection around their lives. And God, I thank you for what you've done and what you're going to continue to do in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Let's all stand in your living rooms and in your kitchen, and let's worship God with a hand clap of praise, and let's worship with our praise team tonight. Amen. Worship in song with us tonight as we sing Nothing But the Blood, followed by some more praise and worship. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing this I plead. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow.
said said we have come into his house you know his house is not brick and mortar his house is not concrete and wiring conduits his house is our our body our body is a living temple unto God and we've come into his house to worship and praise him Glory be to God. Amen. Again, I do appreciate, I greatly appreciate our our praise team. Uh, they've been rotating out. Some have been coming, some different services, and just really appreciate them coming and, and being a part of what God is doing around Coosa Valley, helping us and and leading right into worship. So again, do we do appreciate each one coming and being a part of that as well. Appreciate you joining with us and being a part of our services and coming in and being a part of what God is doing around Coosa Valley. God is doing great things and we're so excited and we're, we're anticipating being able to come back together and to be a part of each other's lives and uh, as I think I said it on Sunday, I am missing a whole lot of hugs and I'll be so ready when that can we can start uh, getting back together. We can have times of fellowship one with another and uh, being uh, with e in each other's lives more uh, than we are right now. But I do I'm, I greatly appreciate uh, Brother Michael and Sister Elizabeth doing their uh, devotion on worship on Tuesdays and Thursdays and our, our praise team being a part of the services. And then uh, we've got our Zoom Bible studies on. Uh, we're doing those uh, on Mondays and Fridays. So uh, God is doing great things. We're going to stay connected to each other. Uh, even in the midst of a health crisis, we're going to still stay connected. Amen. So uh, 
we're just we're looking forward to what God is doing around the church. If you have your Bibles, if you will turn with us to the book of Nehemiah chapter 1. The book of Nehemiah chapter 1. Uh, I want you to turn over to verse 11 this evening, Nehemiah chapter 1. And I want us we're going to start off in verse with verse 11. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 11 look at what it says I'm going to read that and then we're going to go to God in prayer one more time and ask God to touch and minister in our Bible study this evening verse 11 look at what it says O Lord let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. Now I was cupbearer to the king. Dear Heavenly Father, again as we come to you today, I want to thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed us to come to worship and praise you. Father, for the next few moments as we're bringing forth your word in this time of Bible study, I pray, Father, that you'll continuously hide us behind the cross of Calvary, that those looking would see your Son being high and lifted up, that all would be drawn unto you. We forever give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's, let's take a look at that one more time. Now, you've got to remember where we're at here in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah. In the very beginning of, of chapter 1, you can see there that he Nehemiah is told of, of things that's going on, things that's happening to the Jews, things that's happening to, uh, to Jerusalem. And then in verse 4, he sat down, he wept, he mourned for days, he fasted and prayed before God in heaven above. And then in verse, verses, uh, verse 5, on down through verse 10... And then into verse 11, we see the prayer of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was not just praying and um, haphazardly praying, but Nehemiah was praying and seeking God for uh, the children of Israel, for God's children, for, for those that was there. God, he was seeking God for on their behalf. And he was praying and he was touching the throne room of God. He was very much in a time of that he was in such despair. He was mourning, and he was uh, he was greatly in in a great despair over the children, over what was happening in Jerusalem, over what was happening among among God's people. He was in a great despair, and he and I, I said it. I believe it was Monday night in our in our Bible study on Zoom that we had. I brought verse. Um, verse 4 out one more time and he sat down he wept and he mourned and fasted and prayed and this is the prayer verses 5 through 11 is the prayer that he prayed and I want to focus in uh, last Wednesday uh, sister Amanda looked at several aspects of the prayer and then this evening I want us to look at this in verse 11 one more time it says O Lord let your ear be attentive hear the prayer that I'm praying let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name and then look at what the next part was not only did he say not only did he say hear the prayer of your servant but then he says give success to your servant grant me mercy to those that I'm that I'm in front of, those that I'm taking this prayer, those that I'm taking this request this uh, request to, let me have mercy in their sight today. Grant me su success today, but then give me mercy in the sight of those that I'm going to be in front of. And then he closes out the prayer, and what a wonderful sentence this next part is. And we're going to touch base in this in just a second. He says, now I was cupbearer to the king. Those of you that have got 
uh, this book that we've got that we're doing on our, our Bible study that uh, most of you have taken that home, that you've got this Bible study book. It's, uh, we're in chapter 3 in that. And I want us to look at a couple of things as we're looking at this. As this chapter ends in the book of Nehemiah, as this chapter is ending, Nehemiah is re realizing the position that he's in and how he is seeking God for help. He realizes what's happening and what's taking place and that he's seeking God for help on behalf of the children of God. Chapter 2 begins in the Jewish month of Nisan, which is March and April, which is about where we're sitting at right now. And chapter 2 is four months later after the prayer. But the part that I want us to focus on is this, how that Nehemiah, he does not celebrate a personal achievement. But he does find that it is ironic and he does find that, that it's a very needful prayer. And he realizes very quickly that this has got to be a God thing because Nehemiah is one of the most important folks in the king's court. And he's going to the king here in chapter 2. He's fixing to go to the king and he's fixing to ask a huge request of the king. Think about what's fixing to ask. He has been thinking and praying for these four months of this, after this prayer in chapter 1. He's been thinking and praying of the fact that he's going to go to the king. He's going to ask the king that he, so he can get started. He's going to ask the king to provide the resources. He's going to ask the king to provide the, the servants. He's going to ask the king to have his own governorship. And the finances from the king's own pocketbook to finance the trip and the building adventure that Nehemiah is fixing to undertake. We're going to find out shortly that the king responds positively to what Nehemiah is requesting. God is good. Now we need to understand something simply on, the, on this in this aspect of where we're sitting at with the king and with this request. We need to understand that this is a very bold request and we need bold and righteous leaders today, today more than ever before. But being bold is not bold is not all that's needed. We need religious leaders and we need we need church folks today that 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 has that boldness but it is under control by God having uncontrolled boldness can violate the rights of people dominating and trampling them underfoot being righteous is not enough because just being righteous without incentive or initiative and the courage to follow through with the ideas and the projects is waste of time boldness and the righteousness of God molded together is what we need today. Now we're going to look at in chapter 2. Look, let's take a look and let's start looking at what's happening here with Nehemiah. In chapter 2, look at what it says. In the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year, in the twelfth year of the reign of the king, when wine was before him. I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now remember, Nehemiah is the cupbearer of the king. He's the one that's got to take the king his drink. Now I had not been sad in the presence of the king up to this point. Remember, this has been four months down the road. This has been four months down the road since he began started praying and weeping and crying out before God. But he goes into the king one day and look at verse 2. The king says, why you got a sad face? You're not sick. If you are, you better leave. No, he didn't say that. Why is your face sad seeing you're not sick? This has got to be sadness of the heart. Nehemiah said, I was very much afraid. 
And I said to the king, Let the king live forever. Why should I not hide my why should not my face be sad when the city, the place of my father's graves, lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Then look at what verse 4. Hold right there for just a second, verse 4. In addition to boldness and righteousness, there needs to be a crying need for visionary leaders, leaders who will challenge us with great visions for the future. Now, I know that on everybody's mind and in everybody's heart right now and what's going across everybody's mindset is our economic status for our families, for our churches, and quite frankly, for our nation. That's going through everybody's life, in everybody's minds right now. I know that there are different avenues of uh, to where that we're going to be able to receive. Uh, there, there's financial assistance that's coming, and there's there's great ways that that that's able to be a part of what we're doing. But what I want us to understand is simply this: we as a church, we as God's people, even with assistance that's coming, and I'm not knocking the CARES Act that was just passed. That's going to be great assistance for some people. Those great assistances could be there for some small businesses. But what I want us to understand as children of God, as God's church and as God's people, we need to understand the government is not what's placed us where we're at. The government is not what's financed the church to where we're at now. But what we've got to understand is God's God is going to take care of God's people. Now, is God going to take care of His people through this CARES Act? That could be one avenue that God's going to take care of some of His people and some of the church. But what we've also got to understand is this. If we take our eyes off of God, even in the midst of the struggle, even in the midst of the health crisis, even in the midst of what's going on, if we take our eyes off of God and we start looking on everything else for assistance and for, and for a bailout and for everything... Now, look, I'm not knocking what the government's doing. Please don't read that into this. What I need us to understand is there is a need in the church world today more than ever before for leaders, and those leaders need to challenge us with great visions of what God has in store for us. Most people want an easy route to follow, a cause for which they can commit themselves, and a purpose for living, a goal to strive for, a task to fulfill, a work that's satisfying. But first, before those things, there's got to be a vision. There's got to be something laid out in front of us. There's got to be a vision. Somewhere, there's got to be an idea. Somewhere, somebody's got to see a need. Somewhere, somebody's got to see a problem that needs to be solved. And in that aspect, the vision is born and the process starts rolling forward. We don't need to take our eyes off of God. We don't need to take our eyes off of God's leaders that He has placed inside of, in our lives and in front of us. We need to keep our eyes focused on what God has got in front of us. There needs to be in the church world today leaders, and they are desperately needed. And these leaders need to be, need to be leaders that can drive us to better ourselves and our societies. We don't need to be just worried about what's going to happen just in our own lives, but we've got to focus on what's going on in the world, in the society, in the city, and the community all around us. Nehemiah is worried about the city that he grew up in. Now look at this. He says, Nehemiah tells, he says this in verse 3. He says, why should I not be sad? And basically he says, when the city I was raised in 
the city where the church house is at, the city where my fathers are buried at. It all lies in ruins, and the gates have been destroyed by fire. There's a vision that Nehemiah has. There's a problem that he's seen that's got to be solved. There's something that has been brought in front of him. And guess what Nehemiah does? He jumps right into action. No, he doesn't. That's the first thing that people have got to understand. Is jumping is not what's got to happen. What we've got to do, what we've got to do is we've got to do what Nehemiah did. Go back to Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 4. Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 4. He says this, I heard the words. Now watch. We've got to have folks, we've got to have people that sees a need what is the need in our society today? Don't answer that as, as it being a health crisis. Sure, there's a health crisis going on. But there's also a spiritual crisis. There's a spiritual crisis in the world today. The labor, the, the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. We have got to see the spiritual crisis that's going on. The spiritual crisis is that the, the church world, there are, there are folks that have not, that the church is not a priority anymore. So many are devastated because the churches are, quote, shut down. I didn't know the church was shut down. Nobody told me. There are folks that are so devastated because the churches are shut down. The church is not shut down. The church is very much alive, and the church is very much moving forward in God. The churches are taking a proactive step to help in the health crisis. But we need not forget the spiritual crisis. The spiritual crisis is... The church is living in a world that people are dying and going to hell. Yesterday, I believe it was, on the news, they said that 700 people, 700 plus people, I believe it was yesterday, that 700 plus died from the coronavirus in America. 700 plus people died yesterday. Well, guess what? Guess what? There are people that is dying, and some of those folks that died from a coronavirus, they woke up, and it was not a nice place. Hell is a real place, brother Andy. You do not need to you do not need to utilize the health crises to preach about that. Right now, it, sin needs to be preached more now than it ever has before. Why? Because people have taken this as an opportunity to step away from church. Because the church is closed. Folks, the church is not closed. The church has a grand opportunity right now to be the church more than it ever has been before. Now, let's take a look at what Nehemiah does. Nehemiah, in verse 4, he says, I heard the words, I sat down, I wept. This is chapter 1, verse 4. I heard the words, I sat down, I wept, and I mourned. I fasted, and I prayed before God. Now look on at verse at chapter 2 and verse 4. First of all, we need people in the church world to be bold. We need people to follow the righteousness of God in that boldness. Now watch. There needs to be an idea to help solve a need. And in solving that need and that problem, we've got to begin the process to do that. We can't just see it and say, well, somebody else will do it. But we've got to see it, and God's going to put an action in our mindsets, then in our heart, and we've got to follow the process to solve that. 
What does Nehemiah do? In chapter, in chapter 2, verse 3, he tells the king, Why shouldn't I be sad? The world we live in, let's just put it in our, in our, in our perspective today. Verse 3 could read something like this. Why shouldn't I be sad? Why shouldn't I mourn? Why shouldn't I be praying? Why shouldn't I be crying? Because the world, the America, the nation we live in, the statistics show that 50% of the people that live in America do not claim to be a Christian. Half of the nation we live in claims to be a Christian and half do not. Why should I not be sad? Then verse 4, look at what verse 4 says to, to Nehemiah. The king says, what, are you, what do you want me to do about it? This was not the king's problem. This was not what Nehemiah had going on in his life. This was not the king's problem. This was not something that the king had to respond to. This was not something that was in the king's mindset that he needed to take care of. But Nehemiah had been praying. The king opened up and said, But what do you want me to do about it? What we've got to do in that situation is we've got to pray. And we've got to ask God to give us the boldness to step through that door opening. We need visionary leaders, who, and they are desperately needed, that will help drive us to better ourselves and our society. The ministry of challenging people to our higher cause than themselves is one of the greatest needs for the, human, for the human heart to cry out to and for the church to have today. We want to all be, be encouraged. We want to all be encouraged and pushed to be better and to do better and to achieve more. But if that causes us to get outside of our comfort zone, we don't want to do it. Nehemiah was asking the king to come out of his comfort zone. I believe that that's what God has, called, has asked the church to do. The God, God is asking the church to get outside of your comfort zone. God is asking the church to take a step outside of our comfort zone. Now we've already said, we've already said that, that the way that the church services are going has caused the praise team and has caused pastors, including me, I want to make sure I throw that in there, We've all got to step out of our comfort zone. I want to. I want to. I want to do. I want to show you something. Now look at this. I'm gonna take a picture right here, church. I want to show you something, and I'm gonna post this here in a little bit. I want you to see what I'm seeing. Now, yes, I've got it zoomed to the point where I can see part of the pews, but I want you to see what I'm seeing. I'm going to walk down here to this, to this camera, and I want you to see, and then I'm going to hand my phone to uh, Sister Carrie, and, and she's going to post this in one of the comments. But I want you to see what I'm seeing. This, that's what I see here. In the middle aisle, there's a table, there's a camera, there's a TV screen. But I want you to notice on the right hand and the left side of that TV, of that camera, it's empty pews. This is definitely out of our comfort zone. This is definitely outside of where, of where we're comfortable at. And I want, I want the reason that I'm bringing that out is simply this. Until we get out of our comfort zone, until we get out of our comfort zone, we're not necessarily going to do anything. 
We can be in our comfort zone and we can be lounged back in a recliner. We can be in our comfort zone and we can be all relaxed. But we've got to move out of our comfort zone. Do you know how to move out of our comfort zone? Watch this. Luke chapter 9, 23 through 25. As you're turning in your Bibles there, Luke chapter 9, 23 through 25. I want to finish this thought that I had before, before I read that. The king, this was not the king's responsibility. This was a need that was not the need, the need that the king had to, had to involve himself in. But Nehemiah took it to him anyway. The king may not have ever even heard or knew that this was even a problem. But guess what he did? He asked Nehemiah, there's something on your mind. There's something that's made you sad. Nehemiah told him. And then the next, the next verse, verse 4 says, the king says, what do you want me to do about it? It's basically what he said. For us, the church, there's a great need. The need is the gospel of Jesus Christ has got to go out besides these, outside of these four walls. How do we do that? We get out of our comfort zone. Luke chapter 9, 23 through 25. This is what it says. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, Take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will lo shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever, shall with whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gains the whole world, loses himself, or be cast away? Nehemiah was such a man. Nehemiah was such a leader. He, Nehemiah had a vision that was both bold and righteous. He was a leader who exhorted, exhorted himself and challenged others to action. The church needs to encourage one another and we need to challenge each other to action today. Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king. While in the palace, he received alarming news. The alarming news for the church today is there's still people that are not saved. That should be alarming news for the church. Hearing this news breaks Nehemiah's heart. Hearing the news should break our heart. For many days... Nehemiah fasted and prayed. We need to fast and pray. We need to draw closer to God. After the days of fasting and praying, the opportunity was there to bring up the sub subject with the king and to seek help for the distress, dist distressed Jews back at Jerusalem. Nehemiah personally wanted to return and help the people, but he had to seek permission first. However, seeking a long leave of absence could have been dangerous for the king. If the request displeased the king, he could have been imprisoned. He could have even been executed. But because of the seriousness of the request, Nehemiah took four months to plan his strategy. In closing, I need us to understand something. We as the church, we've got to have boldness. But we've got to have the right mindset in that boldness. In boldness, we've got to have the right courage. We've got to have the right avenue for that courage. We've got to have the right avenue for our boldness to move into. We've got to have the righteousness of God to move inside of that boldness so that we're not just stepping out haphazardly. We've got to have the vision given to us by God. 
We've got to find the need and the see where the vision can take place in need. And God's going to give us the avenue of that vision to be fulfilled. We can't just step out on our own. We can't just step out and say that everybody's else against us. But what we've got to do is we've got to step out in the plan that God wants us to step out in. We can't look to the right, we can't to the left, look to the left. But we've got to have boldness in the avenue that God would have us to go in. In doing that, we're going to follow the steps that Nehemiah had. But first, and that's been, our, that's been a point of topic Sunday night. It's a point of topic in our Bible study on Monday. That's been a point tonight. I firmly believe that this health crisis... Now, somebody asked me if God, if God brought this health crisis I, I, to punish people. I'm not going to venture down that alley. I'm not going to venture down that road. But I'm going to also tell you simply this. God can choose to remove His hand. Now, I'm not saying just because you get sick means that God, the hand of God's moved off of you. But I'm saying this, God can move His hand off of a nation. I don't want God to remove His hand off of His chosen people, the church. I don't want God to remove His hand. I want Him to keep His hand upon us. I want to be part of that remnant of people that is still seeking God. I want God to keep His hand on a remnant of people that is still seeking God and seeking for the direction and the path that God would cause us to go in. That's where I want God to have us at. Now more than ever before. There is a harvest. And even in the midst of social distancing, God is wanting a people to go out into that harvest. Would you bow your heads and would you pray with us this evening? Dear Heavenly Father, again as we come to you today, want to thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed us to come to worship, praise, and magnify you. Father, today, as we have brought forth your word, as you've given it to us, Father, I pray that as your word has gone forth, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would, uh, that you would allow your words to resonate into the hearts and lives of each one. Each one that's not only sitting under the sounding of our voice, but being a part of what you would call us to do. God, give us the direction, give us the vision that you would have us to go. Help us to be the people you would have us to be. Continue to watch over and protect us in every step of the way. And God, I thank you and I praise you for what you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Again, I appreciate you being a part of our services this evening. I hope that something has been said, something has been done. The praise and worship. What an awesome, awesome songs tonight. And in the message tonight, I hope something has been said to bring encouragement into your lives. Over the next few days, I'm, I'm encouraging our church family to continue to call and check on each one. Take, take an opportunity to text or call someone tomorrow. Check on them. Pray with them over the phone. There's something that's needed that you're not unable to help them with. Uh, be sure to give us a call here at the church to where that we can uh, facilitate that need and we can be a part of what God is doing. We can utilize those, those avenues of needs to help our church family. Again, thank you for being a part of our services. Continue to keep a check on our social media and our website to know exactly what's going on and what's taking, a pl taking place around our church. Prayer request, continue to text those in at 205 642 8744. Uh, we want to continue to help pray for you and with you during this time. Remember to visit our website at cvcog.church for information on uh, live feed uh, avenues, our giving options, prayer requests, and so much more. All, all that information can be found on our website.
again. May the good Lord bless you as our prayer. Amen and amen.